So Dr. Edward Lanieski, board certified orthopedic surgeon here at the AOAO or the American Osteopathic Academy of Orthopedics here in Colorado Springs at the beautiful historic Broadmoor. And this is a real treat because I have Dr. Teresa Deicher here. She is by far the most intelligent woman I have ever met, by far. And she actually helped me a long time ago, and I, I'm eternally grateful to her. But listen to this. This lady went ahead and was one of the first people to describe the cardiac stem cell. You have 35 patents, 35 patents, somewhere around there, 35 patents that are out there. Anything that has to do with stem cell, she knows about it, she's worked with it. Uh, and I'm honored to go ahead and be on her team that we helped develop the uh, AVM 0703. When I say we helped develop, is all I did is just kind of follow you around. But um, it's been very exciting. And she was here at the conference today and gave a great presentation about how we can keep stem cells where they should be when we do the treatment because a lot of the stem cells that we inject like into joints, very few of them stay around. A majority of them get into the circulating system and go to the spleen and they get sequestered there. And you're gonna talk about in all your research how you found a very novel way to help prevent that. Well, thank you. Um, yep, so I uh, was really excited to be here to talk about stem cell movement through the body. And because I was lucky enough to do a postdoctoral fellowship in hematology, I learned uh, way back in the early 1990s that stem cells just don't go where we think that they're going to go. And most people don't know that. So a lot of people have jumped into regenerative medicine not understanding that basic control of stem cell uh, movement. So what, what I learned uh, during my postdoc, I wasn't working on it, but one of my colleagues was, and it turns out this was first published in the early 1960s by two Canadian bone marrow transplant surgeons. Mm -hmm. But if you lethally irradiate a mouse and you give them stem cells in bone marrow to rescue them, the stem cells don't go to the bone marrow. The stem cells go to the spleen and that seems a bit surprising. So in the spleen, in, in um, the situation where you've had radiation or chemotherapy and all of your blood cells have been eliminated, what happens is that those stem cells divide very rapidly, really massive proliferation. And the spleens actually start to look like pea pods. Mm -hmm. So you can see the stem cell colony is growing in the spleen. And then from there, the stem cells go back and they repopulate the bone marrow. And so, um, just to reiterate here, so I was, if I take stem cells, I put them on my skin as a cream, I take stem cells, I put them in my knee, I put them in my shoulder, they don't stay there. They go through the bloodstream because all those areas are vascularized and they will go through the bloodstream right into the spleen. That's true, that's correct. So, and and uh, so a lot of that, that expensive stuff that you went in and just paid for ends up in the spleen. Yes, about 90 plus percent of it. And, and at the site where stem cells are applied, usually only one to three percent of the stem cells will stay there. So you might get some effect, but you're certainly not getting the effect of all of the stem cells that were used. And that, that might be uh, like Lisa Fortier that actually she did her postdoc here at, in Colorado State University and she's in Cornell, where that relationship of the response that we get in some of these stem cell therapies is not in relationship so much to the stem cell concentration as it is to the other um, plasma proteins that are there and the growth factors. That seems to be giving you the positive response, but we could get such a greater response if those stem cells st sticked around or absolutely, stayed around there. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about AVM 0703. So AVM 0703 is a, a drug. It's a small molecule. And what it does is it temporarily eliminates the cells 
the areas of the spleen where stem cells um, bind, where they get soaked up and sequestered. And when the binding areas are no longer present, the stem cells can't bind, so they stay in the bloodstream. Yeah. Yeah. And you, I mean, you could do the same thing by removing the spleen, which is an expensive surgery, and it also removes other functions of the spleen that we don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. So your patients would be at risk of cancer, of atherosclerosis, and a heart attack. And so it's much better just to temporarily eliminate those specific areas where the stem cells get bound up. So you give them this, uh, this novel small molecule drug, AVM0703, that keeps the stem cells circulating through the bloodstream and they eventually get to the area of disease. So as long as you're having a diseased area, like your knee where you have bad arthritis and it's aching, some of those stem cells by circulating around are gonna end up back into that area. Yes, because a damaged organ is making signals called chemokines, and it's putting them out trying to get stem cells to come in. Yeah. So as long as the cells stay in the bloodstream, about 1% to 3% can be pulled in to the damaged organs. And not only did you, you find out that this AVM0703 helped do that, but some surprising other things too is that the actual number of stem cells in the bone marrow harvest doubled. They yes. doubled. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that was very surprising. So we've seen that in mice, in horses, and in some uh, early human uh, proof of concept work. And um, what we did was we took bone marrow after they'd been treated with our drug and we measured the number of mesenchymal stem cells or hematopoietic stem cells that were there um, by function. And so what we did was we took them into the lab and mesenchymal stem cells can become fat cells and um, uh, chondri con cartilage forming cells, chondrocytes, and bone forming cells, osteocytes. And to measure all three of those, we call them CFUFs, Colony Forming Units Fibroblasts. Mm -hmm. And for the blood stem cells, the hematopoietic stem cells, we measured colony forming units of the blood, blood cells. And what we found was that the stem cells were about two-fold or more higher in the bone marrow after the mice, the horses, or the, the human patients had been treating with our drug. Yeah, so that, that, it's really interesting. So not only are you getting higher number, or not only are you preventing them from being sequestered, but you're getting higher numbers. So it has two positive effects. And, and how about the toxicity of though? Because you know there's other drugs that can do this, such as Nupagen, but they only do one part of that. But the benefit of the AVM0703 is that it does two ends. It, it, it increases the numbers and it prevents the sequestration. But also, most importantly, the toxicity of that. Um, as we all know that Nupagen, most of those patients that ha have had that drug, they complain of bone, of, of bone pain, and not a little bit of bone pain, pretty significant amount of bone pain, at least half those patients do. Right, so the bone pain that's caused by Nupagen, it is very significant. And um, the, the way that Nupagen works is that it not only increases the number of stem cells, but it really dramatically increases the number of neutrophils in the bone marrow. And the bone marrow space gets so crowded that the stem cells kind of get pushed out into the bloodstream because of the overcrowding. And, and bone is not expandable, so that overcrowding is very painful. Yeah. It's yeah. very painful. And we, we don't do that. We don't have that effect um, to increase the nutrients. Yes, yeah. and, um, and I, I totally agree with you on that. So uh, in, your, in your presentation today, you kind of also alluded to some other cool things that AVM0703 is doing, uh, especially with cancers, um, uh, especially um, certain types of cancers, if you want to go ahead and talk about that. So um, we were originally developing uh, our drug from the viewpoint of regenerative medicine, as you know. And um, one of my uh, scientists uh, serendipitously increased the dose that was given to mice. And what we discovered was that we could basically 
um, eliminate all lymphocytes in, in the blood. And that's important because eliminating the lymphocytes is the thing that is the etiology of the disease. Right, yeah. right. So not only in the blood, then we looked in the thymus, we looked in the bone marrow, we looked in the spleen, and it is able to eliminate lymphocytes except for a really cool population that we want right, right. Um, in every compartment of the body. And what that means is that we might provide uh, an answer, you know, a response to prayers to patients with autoimmune disease, mm -hmm. to patients with lymphoma, because lymphomas are cancerous lymphocytes and our drug can kill them. And so um, we're getting ready to get into the clinic in terminal, no option lymphoma patients, and um, then we'll expand into autoimmunity. Yeah, and so one of the things you, you said earlier is about it, it tells this AVM 0703 again, tells those lymphocytes to commit suicide. Yes. Yes. It, it, it selectively tells them you're done, we don't need you anymore, get rid of them. And that's great because we're selectively removing cells rather than a lot of the chemotherapies which just kill every cell and you're just hoping that the patient survives and that the cancer is cured that way. Well, it, the, our drug is selective because it, it binds to something that the, the lymphocytes the, and the lymphoma cells, the cancer cells, express on their cell surface. And by binding to that receptor, it's kind of like a key fitting into a lock, mm -hmm. it, it, that's how it tells the cell commit suicide. It's called apoptosis. And then the cells kill themselves, basically. But that receptor isn't found on most of the cells in our body. And so the rest of our cells are not, um, not touched. Like chemo is, I talk about it, it's like the nuclear option, yeah. right? And, yeah. and this is sort of like a guided missile. Yeah, very good example. And then, you know, and finally, tell us a little bit about the name of o AVM 0703. How did it get that name, and why is this a, a personal journey for you? So we've um, been through a few reiterations of the name, um, you know, being trained by some excellent biotech and pharmaceutical companies. I know that it's important that you brand you know, your molecule um, early. And when we were in the regenerative medicine space, we sort of had one branding that just wasn't appropriate going into um, a lymphoma or an autoimmune um, indication. And so we decided just to use AVM. Um, we're AVM Biotechnology. And um, we had been aware uh, since very early on that not only could we prevent stem cells from being sequestered in the spleen, but we could take some lymphoma cells that like to grow in the spleen in the germinal centers, mm -hmm. and, and by eliminating the germinal center sites, those cells would be forced into the bloodstream. And when cancer cells are in the bloodstream, they're more susceptible to chemotherapy. So we were interested in regenerative medicine and in Burkitt's lymphoma. And it was, um, I guess, quite ironic that on July 30th of 2014, uh, my younger son, Henry, uh, was diagnosed with Burkitt's lymphoma. And um, we fought a 11-month battle, um, many rounds of chemotherapy. I don't remember how many, uh, more than seven. Uh, a bone marrow transplant, and um, he was refractory. He didn't respond to um, anything in the in the end. Um, but uh, he um, he was a great he was and is a great source of inspiration to many people. He's touched so many people's lives, um, and um, he just found faith. Um, he fought until the end and had a, just a beautiful, positive attitude, um, finding joy and holding puppies and, um, you know, being with his friends, going to his eighth grade graduation. He did graduate, even though he didn't attend a single day of eighth grade um, school. Um, uh, but he passed away on um, July 3rd, 2015. And um, his face, 
Um, the next year was the face to raise money for the Washington chapter of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and continues to be one of the faces in his story. Um, we have a college scholarship in his name that we give to a cancer survivor every year. And um, his, his brother, uh, who is a musician, um, has done um, many concerts to raise money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma, yeah. Lymphoma Society for the Cancer Scholarship. And then he and a group of his friends, juniors in high school, formed an organization called Cross Out Cancer. And they have a fun run every year. And the money raised from that goes to support the families on the children's oncology units because cancer can wipe out a family. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, other serious medical conditions, but it, it, it just wipes you out. And um, I'm really passionate about getting our drug into clinic. I don't want another mother to hold her dying son if we can do something about it. And so when uh, we decided to rebrand um, mm -hmm. our drug, I thought that um, the day of Henry's death was an auspicious day, and he would there... He would be sort of always part of the team, bringing this forward to help other people. So, thank you for sharing that. And um, it is so ironic that that date is now a date of new hope for kids that have the same thing. Well, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> I think so too. You, you, that story, that story, is so inspirational. That I don't think people realize that. She brought my Kleenex. I don't, <laughs> and I don't have anything here. You can use my hair, really. <laughs> but um, that story is so inspirational because there's nobody that works harder than you. Like I said, you 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 email me cryptic emails like at one o'clock in the morning, uh, just at the top of like a thought that comes in your head because it's just unrelenting that you have this drive that you have to figure this out, and and you will. And we will, and this will be a, a great day. This will be a, a great day for Henry. This will be a great day for, for mankind that we can go ahead and deliver a drug that's safe and effective and has meaning and has real meaning. So on that happy note, <laughs> this is Dr. Edward Ladieski, board certified orthopedic surgeon with CellularHealing.net. Remember, these are your cells for your healing. Take care.